Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I have an excellent video for you guys today. Uh, some new encounters that came to my attention from Western Canada out on Vancouver Island. And I have a very interesting new theory that I just discovered. Um, might not be new to some people, but it's definitely new to me and it's extremely interesting. Uh, so we'll get into it. I just got back from a trip um, out on Vancouver Island and I was exploring uh, the west coast near Tofino and um, you know basically just shooting a bunch of b-roll for future projects lots of nature stuff and um, you know trying to find some Bigfoot leads along the way and to try and you know track down any more uh, encounters uh, that aren't really out there online and um, it was very interesting I went out to, to film some whales some gray whales so I went out on a boat and I asked the captain of the boat, the uh, the driver, uh, if we're gonna see Sasquatch, you know, just kind of as a joke. That's sometimes how I like to kind of ease my way into the subject with people is I'll make a joke to try and test the waters. Um, so I'm like, are we gonna find Bigfoot? And he's just like, you know, actually like, man, I got a lot of Bigfoot stories for you. So if you want, we can talk about that. And I was like, okay. So I told him I had a YouTube channel about Bigfoot and, you know, he was open to, to telling me some, some crazy stories. And um, it turns out that, you know, not too far away from Tofino, just north of Tofino, on some of the islands, there's been some crazy Bigfoot encounters. And one of them specifically is like a, almost like a mini Ape Canyon incident where a cabin is just completely bombarded by rocks and sticks and things of that nature. Also, before I start, um, uh, at the very end of the video, I put in the audio of this boat captain telling me these stories. He started talking about them, and then I thought it'd be a good idea to turn on the sound recorder on my phone, just to record it so I could remember the stories and the people's names and you know where this stuff occurred. Um, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to give that a listen. The audio quality is kind of bad because the boat sound is very loud. Uh, but you can kind of make out what he's saying, but it gets progressively worse as the audio track goes on. So be weary of that, but stick around to listen to that. The first thing that this guy explained to me is that on Mears Island, just north of Tofino there, there, for whatever reason, there was cows on the island. And, and these islands are, you know, they're populated by First Nations people. It's First Nations land. Um, and for, for whatever reason, they had cows on this island. And um, there was one time not long ago where they found one of these cows just behind the village um, completely ripped in half and not eaten or, you know, carried off or anything like that, but just ripped in half and sitting there, which I think is kind of bizarre. Uh, there are lots of dangerous wild animals in these areas as well. It's worth noting there's lots of bears. There's plenty of bears. People do bear watching tours. Um, uh, Vancouver Island has the highest uh, density of mountain lions anywhere in North America. So there are lots of predatory animals. But it just seems odd to me that uh, a cow is just ripped in half and, and lying there. And um, the, the people, the locals, immediately assumed it was a Sasquatch creature. Now I'm sure Sasquatch tales um, go back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years in these areas. Right? This is Ape Island. This is where, you know, most of the reports from Canada come from. A lot of the historical accounts and most of the First Nations accounts of Bigfoot in Canada come from Vancouver Island and the West Coast. Um, but it's interesting because I found out a new name for this creature that I haven't heard before. Some of you may have heard it, especially if you're from the West Coast. Um, but the people in this specific area call Sasquatch Pookmis, P-O-O-K-M-I-S, Pookmis. Now, if you do some research online, you will find that the Pookmis is known as a sea spirit or um, a wild man of the sea. Now, you can make of that what you will. I don't know exactly what that means or refers to. Uh, the wild man, you know, we call Bigfoot wild man, we call Sasquatch wild man. Wild man of the sea might just mean um, wild man of the islands. You know, it could specifically mean Bigfoot. Pookmas could be Bigfoot. Um, 
but all I know is that the people in this specific area refer to this hairy, upright, wild man creature that fits the description of Sasquatch. They refer to it as Pookmas. And uh, that's a name I had not heard before. You'll find when you talk to a lot of these First Nations uh, groups um, that they have, like, very specific names for the creature for very specific areas. And this is one of those cases here. On Mears Island, they had this cow that got ripped in half, and you can see in the footage here, uh, this is footage of Mears Island. Uh, the big prominent uh, mountain that you see is called Lone Cone Mountain. That's what they call that mountain. It's just the, the most prominent land feature, I would say, on Mears Island. And um, what I was thinking was that if there is Sasquatch on the island, um, if they are killing the cattle, and um, you know harassing the people on the island they probably frequent this mountain and maybe even reside on top of the mountain the cool thing is that uh, a person can go to tofino and they can charter a water taxi to that island and you know explore the island they can explore the island they can hike around apparently there's lots of hiking trails you can actually uh, hike to the top of this lone cone mountain and uh, you know that's something i would love to do in the future now, another thing that happened that this uh, boat captain told me is that a little ways further north in a place called Stewardson Inlet, there was a First Nations fellow who was out staying at a remote cabin. He turned in one night and at about 11 p.m. Um, something started attacking the cabin, throwing rocks at it, big rocks from different directions. Uh, felt like it was more than one being doing it. Rocks, sticks, things of that nature, forest debris, all hitting the cabin. The guy was hearing howling and growling sounds, very guttural growling sounds. Um, you know, very reminiscent to descriptions we hear of Bigfoot vocalizations. And w like, what else could this be? You know, you can argue about vocalizations that they could be something else. But when something's picking up rocks and sticks and, and throwing them at your cabin, like big rocks, what else could that be? It really can't be anything other than Sasquatch. You know, it could be people, but still a lot of these rocks that come flying at people when they're, you know, bombarded. Uh, it's The rocks are way too big to be thrown at any distance by a, a person. Uh, it would only make sense that it was from a Sasquatch. They possess the strength to do things like that. But anyways, this guy was under attack. And um, when he first went to this place, Stewardson Inlet, he was dropped off there by a bush pilot. And um, I guess the pilot that dropped this guy off um, went out, I think, early in the morning to uh, take a whiz. He was not too far away. And uh, he went out to take a whiz and he checked his phone and he noticed he had a whole pile of missed calls and texts. Because this guy, you know, was messaging him like, you have to come here and get me. Like, you know, something is here, something crazy is happening. You need to get me out of here now. And so this guy went and flew his plane to pick this guy up. And when he picked this guy up, he saw him. He was on the beach lying in his sleeping bag just waiting to get picked up. He was lying there with his ax in his hand, just shaking in, in, in complete terror. Like this is like a mini uh, Ape Canyon, a cabin being bombarded with rocks. Um, luckily this guy wasn't actually hurt. He was able to make it out of the cabin, got to the beach and uh, was able to get rescued. But you know, the, guy, the captain I was talking to said he was on the verge of just pissing his pants, which is, you know, for a man who um, spends a lot of time in the bush, you know, the bush can get pretty spooky, especially, you know, in these uh, coastal forests. There's a lot of things out there that can hurt you. A lot of, you know, natural things that we know about that can hurt you that are scary. Um, but a lot of these people out on the West Coast that spend time on, the, on these islands are used to it. And to have them kind of break down like that and just need to leave, you know, that really says something. I wonder if he felt that feeling uh, what people refer to as zapping, you know, where you just get that intense, sudden feeling 
of dread and terror and needing to just leave. You know, I'm sure he felt that um, just based on the fact that there was large rocks being thrown from the trees uh, at his cabin. But anyways, an absolutely terrifying uh, Bigfoot encounter. And I'm sure there's plenty more like this from the area. Those are just a couple stories uh, that I heard, you know, from a local, which is interesting. You know, if you go to these places, just, you know, try and bring up the topic of Bigfoot and ask about it and see if you can get any information. You never know what you're going to find. It's interesting because, like, I thought way more people, to be honest, would be open to the idea. I asked quite a few people uh, about Sasquatch and some of them completely just shut me down. They're like, no. Like, this thing doesn't exist. And that surprised me on the West Coast. Um, but there were people that uh, heard stories and that were totally into it, which was really cool. So, yeah, this Mears Island, I, I really want to check it out. Apparently, there is a local researcher who I had never even heard of um, doing, you know, research uh, in this area. Setting up sound recorders. Apparently, he's actually recorded audio and um, I want to try and track it down. Um, it'd be interesting to hear and get a hold of and to uh, compare it to other examples of Bigfoot audio. Also, an interesting thing that the boat captain told me about that you will hear in the audio clip at the end is that the locals believe this Pukmas, uh, the Sasquatch creature, they believe it can tap into what is called the mycelium network. Now, this is a very interesting theory that I you know, never thought about. I never thought of this at all. It, the thought had never occurred to me before. I've heard of the mycelium network before and what it is essentially is a network of underground um, like roots and fungi and microscopic, you know, microscopic fungi um, and, you know, plant material and organisms that are all linked together and uh, they communicate with each other apparently. They believe that plants um, have the ability to communicate with each other through this mycelium network. Now what the locals believe is that the Sasquatch can tap into this mycelium network and that is how they are able to detect when something is moving around on the land. Um, because the mycelium network is underground on land, um, if a, a being like any sort of living creature or a person is walking around on land, the Sasquatch can detect where they are, you know, by using this network. Crazy, right? Now, they say that on the West Coast, uh, a large amount or the majority of the amount of Bigfoot reports and sightings happen from the water. So somebody will be driving around in a boat and they'll spot a Sasquatch on the shore walking along the shore, maybe looking for clams, some sort of, uh, you know, food, or doing whatever. It doesn't really matter. But mo the majority of these uh, sightings happen from a boat. Um, so the Sasquatch are caught by surprise, you know? They can't detect the people out on the water. You know, they're not walking around on the land, so, so they're not able to be detected by use of this mycelium network. Very interesting theory, and you know, who knows? It could be a real thing. I have no idea how the Sasquatch would be able to tap into this network. No idea at all. But the thing that kind of comes into my mind when I think about it is like the scene on the movie Avatar, where they like plug their hair things like into the trees. I know that's like definitely not what happens, but it just kind of reminds me of that because it's a similar concept. They're kind of connecting directly uh, to the plant life. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, this happens all like underground. The mycelium network is underground. I don't know how they would do it. No idea. And who knows if this is even true, but this is what they believe in this area. And I think it's fascinating. Definitely worth looking into. Um, we should all be maybe doing some research on this mycelium network and um you know apparently it's a vast vast network and um everything is connected all the plants are connected and they can communicate somehow but um yeah that's all i really have to say about that i haven't looked into it too deeply uh, but i was surprised to hear that it was kind of like it was just something i had never even thought of or 
you know, heard of really before. Um, it would kind of, in a sense, explain some of the supernatural aspects of Bigfoot. Because now you have kind of a natural explanation for some of the, you know, the crazier uh, theories about the creature. But anyways, that is really all I have to say for this video. Just some interesting stories that came up by chance. By, you know, carefully bringing up the Bigfoot topic with a local. Um, stick around now and have a listen to the audio of this guy explaining these stories. The story of the cow... Uh, is cut short because as he was in the middle of telling it I thought of turning on my recorder uh, but he does go on to tell the story of the uh, guy getting attacked uh, in his cabin and having rocks thrown at him and whatnot so thanks for watching this video guys hope you enjoy uh, this next segment anyway um, one of these cows is found ripped in half and it was just widely assumed by everyone who lives there that a, a poop gets hit. So, um, that's one thing. Mears Island has kind of more or less had a reputation amongst the Tolokwe for having one or maybe even two of these creatures on it. Yeah. Um, and it's somehow believed that they are connected to the mycelium network, microscopic root system of mushrooms, and are somehow able to tap into it and, and feel and sense where anything is at any given time, as long as it's on land. Yeah. So most sightings that have occurred around here have happened from the water. They haven't been able to access them. Adrian Dorst, you probably know Adrian, is a fairly well-known ecologist in this area, typically around whales and stuff, but his project has been trying to find, uh, or at least record evidence of Sasquatch up around the hot springs, typically up around Stewartson Inlet. Uh, the name, and you know, how is it for that area? I forget the actual name, but it translates into, like, not ours, not belonging to humans. friend who lives up in Stewartson Inlet, and he hears what he refers to as big noises all the time yeah. at night. I mean, big boulders, trees, uh, and weird guttural howls. And there's other various stories, actually, right up in Stewartson, there is a man um, named Sander Jane. He's, uh, I guess you, at one point, he sort of got a job with the Clayton Biosphere Trust um, to basically observe like wildlife up in Stewart's Inlet. 